Daniel here and welcome to a bit of data science and scikit-learn where we learn just a little bit of data science and a whole lot of scikit-learn. We're talking about feature transformation today. It might be better titled as unsupervised learning. Um, but the idea here is that we look at the features that we've got, we make some transformations to them and that might help us uh, visualize the data better or make predictions. Um, we'll start off with clustering. The idea behind clustering is we look at the data we assume that there's a certain number of clusters, and then we go ahead and we say, you're in this cluster, you're in that cluster, and you're in the other cluster. Um, so it's sort of like looking at the data and trying to make arbitrary assignments as to who belongs with whom. Um, we'll go ahead and use k-means as, as the initial clustering algorithm. The only thing you really need to know about this is it basically assumes that there are x number of clusters. Um, so we'll load our data set in. We'll say, hey, there's going to be three clusters. We're using the iris data set, so there are three classes. We fit, because everything in scikit-learn fits, right? We want to fit on the training data. And then it has this predict idea. So uh, this, will, this will basically uh, predict which cluster it's in. Um, and you know, it does a pretty good job. Um, uh, the cluster assignments are, are random. So the, that it's zero here doesn't mean that it predicted it was zero. It just says all of these guys are in the same cluster, all of the ones are in the same cluster, all of the twos are in the same cluster. This looks almost as if it classified them pretty well. And we can do this pretty well. So we can, we can make a decision tree classifier with depth two using only this cluster data. Um, we'll fit, and then we can score. So the clustering assigns them to the correct class 89% uh, of the time. Uh, so this can sometimes be a good feature augmentation. Um, so making a feature that is, which cluster do we think they're part of? Um, it can also be really good with visualization, but I'm mostly sort of showing it to you as, hey, let's augment our data. The second thing that I'm gonna show you is principal components analysis. This is, this is clutch. Uh, there's a ton of types of this, so you can definitely check it out. I'm gonna show you the vanilla type here. Uh, so principal components analysis. So what this does is it reduces the dimensionality of your data. It looks uh, to see which um, dimension, well, I guess, in what direction you're, you're in this very highly multidimensional space. In what direction is your data most variant? Okay, and let's let's uh, let's include that dimension as as part of the basis function. And then we look at everything that's perpendicular to that dimension and find the uh, direction that it is um, that it's most varying in. And we, we, we sort of construct a new basis. Um, so you're, you're gonna go ahead and take a couple of, uh, you know, four features, five features, and reduce it down to fewer. Uh, that's sort of the idea here. Um, the key thing that you wanna look here as uh, number components. Uh, so number of components you specify as like how many features I want in the end. Okay. So we can go ahead, we can use a support vector classifier in conjunction with PCA. So first we say, hey, uh, Iris has a lot of stuff. We've got four. Um, factors, let's reduce it down to two. So two components here. We fit transform to get our XPCA, right? And so now we're down to 150 samples with uh, only two dimensions. You'd think like, oh, you're only using two dimensions. It can't be that good. Well, in fact, PCA actually uh, gives a ton of information. Uh, it, it still retains a lot of the information that, that, we, that we might have thought that we lost because it, it retains the dimensions that are most important. So we can go ahead and we can use this transformed X data uh, and we can fit uh, our SVC with this transformed X data and the Y data. And notice we have to score it on the transformed X data as well. Um, okay, so this is pretty short. Uh, I, hope, I hope it's a little bit nicer. You know, people have been commenting that these have been a little bit long, but, um, but yeah, uh, this, this is basically the idea. Um, there are a couple of other ways that you can uh, do data augmentation, but these are kind of like the main ways. Uh, clustering and PCA are the ones that, that scikit-learn definitely gives you. Um, so I guess the only thing that I would say is remember is just remember some of these have a predict method and some of these have a transform method. PCA is specifically to be used in part of a pipeline. You know, first you dimensionality reduction and then you do prediction. Um, so it has this nice transform method. Um, and we'll see how pipelines get used a little bit later on. Okay, I'm extending this too much. Thank you, and I'll see you again.